Hi gang! Summer's coming and I thought I'd get a head start with water bottle rockets. Rockets that use water for their reaction mass. I'll show you the experiments I've done, how I made them, and go over some of the science involved. A water bottle rocket is extremely simple. You basically get a bottle, put some water in it, plug the opening, but leave some way to pump air into it. You then pump in air, creating a high pressure inside. And when the pressure gets too high, the plug pops out. But due to the high air pressure, the water is also forced out the opening. This causes the bottle to fly in the other direction. Why does the rocket fly in the other direction? When the bottle is sealed, the pressure pushing against the inside walls of the bottle are the same in opposite directions. Pressure against this side cancels the pressure against this side, so the bottle doesn't move sideways. Likewise, pressure at this end cancels the pressure at this end. But when you open this end, the pressure is no longer even. There's pressure against this end, but none here. So the net result is the rocket is forced this way. But why the water? Why not just have air come out of the opening? You may have heard the simple explanation of how a rocket works as Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The action is obviously the water coming out of the opening. The reaction is the force felt on the inside of the bottle here. Keeping it simple, the connection between the water and the inside of the bottle here is the column of air between them. But why is forcing out water better than forcing out air? Take a stick, like this ruler, and hold it in the palm of your hand like this. Move your hand downward. The air below the ruler pushes back up at your hand, though you don't feel much. Now put the bottom of the ruler on a cushion or pillow. Move your hand downward again with the same force. This time your hand feels it. In the bottle rocket, your hand is the inside of the bottle here, the stick is the column of air, and the pillow is the water. With something more substantial to push against, like water instead of air, the bottle really feels it. There's more of a reaction. And that's why we use water. Another way of looking at it is that the water in the opening of the bottle isn't part of the bottle. When the water is in the opening, it's effectively something outside the bottle that the air pressure pushes against. In a fuel burning rocket, the pressure is maintained constantly by burning more fuel, so that kind of rocket keeps going faster and faster. In a water bottle rocket, the pressure begins to decrease as soon as the end is opened up, so it starts fast but goes slower from then on, but at least it lasts long enough to move the rocket some ways. Here's how I made it. To pump the air, I'll be using my bicycle pump. It's not very powerful, but it does a job. It also has a detachable hose, which I take advantage of in this design. For the plug, you can use a cork. This one is too small for the opening in the bottle, so I'd have to modify it. One that fits tightly already would be ideal, but at the time I started out, I didn't have any cork at all, so I used this dowel for the plug instead. I need to make a hole in the plug that's the size of my hose, so I select a suitable drill bit and drill the hole. And there's the end result with the hose in place. I hot glue the ends, both to hold it firmly and to create a watertight seal. I could just stop there, but I'd like to have a launch tower for launching the rocket from. So I dig up this plastic tube and make a big hole on one side. That's for the hose to stick out. And the result works well. But the dowel is too small for the cylinder, so I add a bunch of tape to build up the diameter until it's a tight fit. Next, I start doing the same thing for the end that goes into the bottle. But I quickly realize that the end going into the cylinder needs to be more firm, so I drill holes through the cylinder wall and put in some screws, being very careful not to drill or screw so deeply that I puncture the hose. Some preliminary testing also showed that the black electrical tape allows water to leak out a bit where it ends, so I finish with some much thinner strips of packing tape. Scotch tape will also work. A clear bottle isn't very visible outdoors, so I dig up some red Christmas wrapping paper and tape it on. That should be plenty visible. And now I'm ready to plug in the bottle. To finish the launch tower, I drill a hole in the end cap and screw it to a piece of wood that serves as the base. And now I can do the final assembly. At last, it's time to fly. The first step is to attach the pump and then start pumping. When the pressure is great enough, the rocket takes off. But sometimes I force the bottle onto the plug too much and I have to reach out and manually move the bottle off the plug a little. Luckily, my launch site is near a river, so it's an easy matter to fill up and keep launching. One thing I did notice when analyzing my video is that right after the rocket runs out of propellant, it begins to flip around wildly in the air. It still keeps rising, but I wanted to see what I could do to keep it from flipping like this. So I drew some fins on cardboard, cut them out, and attached them to the bottle. Then I got a piece of acrylic or plastic sheet and used it to add a nose comb. Then it was back to the launch site. It didn't seem to fly as well. A closer analysis of the video showed that when it ran out of propellant, it seemed to flip around and fly backwards. This sort of made sense. Once there's no more water flying out the back, and it's now flying from momentum alone, the heavier part of the rocket tends to flip forward. That's the bottom end, where the fins are mostly. 
You've probably noticed this behavior whenever you throw something that has a light end and a heavy end. The heavy end tends to take the lead. In other words, my fins were probably too heavy. One way to try to keep an object pointing in the same direction is to spin it. You can see this with a simple tabletop gyroscope. While it's spinning, it stays standing up, but once it slows down or stops, it falls to its side. So I made some flaps in the back of the fins and pointed them all in the same direction, hoping that they'd cause the rocket to spin as it rose. But it didn't seem to help at all, maybe even made it worse. I probably needed to get it to spin faster, or to make shorter, more lightweight fins. Instead I moved on to another solution. I attached a bolt and some nuts to the end of the nose. This time, once the rocket has run out of water and is flying up in momentum alone, the nose end will have more mass than the bottom end. That way the nose end should have more momentum and stay forward. And this time it worked. The nose stayed forward. And also notice that since the rocket was pointing in the right direction, the flaps now made it spin. I managed to get a few flights in before the bolt and nuts were forced into the nose. And that ended that series of fun experiments. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes one on how a rocket flies from Earth to orbit, using SpaceX's Falcon 9 as an example. One about a neat big DIY gyroscope that I made using motors and old vinyl records. And sort of related, how to use one of these bottles to find out whether something is positively or negatively charged. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you in a bit.